definition for a column. It's a definition for the primary key. And as we explained earlier, the primary key is going to be a car ID. So what do you write? It's very simple. You write primary key, open bracket, car ID, close bracket. Now the keyword primary key does not have to be uppercase. It does not. The only reason I wrote it uppercase is that I wanted to make the distinction between column definitions and a primary key definition. Okay, so it's easier for you guys to see on the screen. All right, so that's our first table. And what we're going to do now is have a look at the definition for our second table, which is T customers. So I wrote a definition earlier. And there it is. Create table T customers. Okay. Now, what do we have? Well, we have the customer ID. Again, this is going to be a serial, and it's not going to accept any nulls. Then, as previously uh, designed, we've got the first name, a uh, varying character length string of up to 32 characters, and we do not accept any nulls. Sorry, here. Same again, exactly the same for L name, last name. Okay. Then we've got the uh, phone uh, column, which will accept up to 16 characters. And let's not forget, uh, we uh, make this a string because it could be a foreign, uh, an international phone number beginning with a plus sign. Okay, So that's why we create this as a string and not a number. I don't know if you remember, but earlier I said that this should not be null, if we look here in the design. But uh, I changed my mind. There it is, sorry. Not null. Okay. I've changed my mind. I think that we will accept null values here. Because, let's be honest, not everyone has a phone or a phone number, obviously, associated with them. So it would be uh, bad of us to refuse the rental of a car to someone who hasn't got a phone. Okay. So we're going to leave this, this column as uh, a potentially accepting null values. And then our fifth column, the perf date. Well, the data type is date, as we designed earlier. And we don't want this column to accept any null values. So it will be not null. And uh, if you notice, there's a comma at the end of which uh, column definition. Okay. And our last column, balance, numeric, 4, 2. The default will be 0, 0.00, and we do not want to accept any null. Okay, so every time you want a default, you just have to write the keyword default. You have to write what you want the default to be. So for our character one here, we want the value A in single quotes. And here, for our numeric, we want the default value to be 0, 0.00. Okay, so it's initialized to value 0. And then we've got our primary key. So you can see we've got a comma here, but we don't have one at the end here because this is the last, the last uh, line of code in our table definition. Same again here. Okay, no comma. If not, uh, Postgres wouldn't be too happy. All right. So this is our second table, the T customers table. Let's have a look at our last table, the T rentals table. So there we go. T rentals table. We've got a rental ID. It's a serial, and it doesn't take any null. Same again. We've got a car ID, an integer, not null. We've got a customer ID, an integer, not null. And we've got a rental date. Type of date, and we have a default for rental date. Okay, and the default is now open close bracket. Basically, now is a function within the PostgreSQL database server. And what it does is it will replace, it will call this function and will return today's date, basically. Okay? Uh, so every time you have a new entry in the rentals table, if you don't put any values in the rental date column, by default, PostgreSQL will enter today's date. Okay? And we don't want this column to be null again. We want this to have a value. And then comes the definition for the primary key. So you can see that we do have a uh, comma here because there are other definitions coming after it. It's always the last definition that doesn't contain a comma. 
and I hope it looks obvious to you guys. Anyway, our primary key will be the rental ID. And then I'm introducing you to a new term, foreign key. I don't know if you remembered, but I said that a T rentals table will be a linking table between T customers and T cars. Well, these, this, these two definitions are the links that will make the magic happen. And these links are called foreign keys. Now, what are foreign keys? Well, um, a foreign key in a context of a relational database uh, is a referential constraint between two tables. Okay, so the foreign key identifies a column or a set of columns in one uh, in in the referencing table that refers to a column or a set of columns in another referenced table. Uh, the column in the referencing uh, table must be the primary key. So, so the the referencing table in our case here for this foreign key, the referencing table is T cars. Okay. And um, the, the, the column in the referencing table must be a primary key or any other kind of, uh, of key because there are other keys that you can create. Okay? Uh, and the values in one row of the referencing column must, of must occur in a single row in a referenced table. So what this means is that uh, a row in a referencing table cannot contain values that don't exist in a referenced table. So in this T rentals table here, I would not be able to enter an ID, a value, sorry, here, car ID, my apologies. I would not be able to enter a car ID that did not exist in this table here. And I would not be able to enter a customer ID that did not exist in the T customers table, that customer ID here. Okay? I hope this is clear for you guys, but I will do, as I explained earlier, a tutorial on uh, constraints, uh, referential integrity, primary keys and foreign keys at a later date. Okay, so keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes open so you're not out. <laughs> All right, so the foreign key uh, definition, foreign key, car ID, references, T cars, car ID. T cars, car ID. Okay, and the foreign key customer ID, which is this here. References, T customers, customer ID. T customers, customer ID. Couldn't be any simpler. And the last definition in our table doesn't take any commas as usual. We close the bracket, which is opened here, and we put a semicolon. So now, let's go and have a look at uh, creating those tables in our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the first I'm going to copy this, the first definition, which is table T cars. I'm going to minimize this. And below here, I've got a uh, command prompt. I'm going to connect to uh, my database. So my database is called TestDB, and uh, my username, in my case, is Postgres. I'm asking for the password. OK. Now, all I'm going to do is paste. OK, so there's the definition, create table T cars. Car ID is here or not known, brand varchar, type varchar, color varchar, status char1, primary key car ID. Let's press enter. There we go. We've created a table. Table will create an implicit sequence okay, for the serial column tcar.car ID. This is the sequence I talked about earlier. Basically, every time we have a new row in this table, the first row will take value 1, the second 2, the third 1, third 3, sorry, and so on, 4, 5, 6, and so on. It will increment, it increments sequentially. Okay? And the primary key has been created, and it says here that an index will be implicitly created. 